Delhi is actually a double city, Old Delhi and New Delhi, and the capital of India. It is one of the largest cities in the world. An estimated 13 million people live in New Delhi. In India, only Mumbai is larger. For many, Delhi is the starting point of a trip to India. The city is perhaps not the ideal place to get accustomed to due to its bustle, but it does offer an excellent impression of the country, at least as far as large cities are concerned. It also has a lot to offer through its houses built in the British colonial style, through its boulevards and parks and of course through the lively hustle and bustle with the countless traders and rickshaws. The Red Fort, the Jama Masjid Moscow, the India Gate and the Kutub Minar are just a few of the sights to see. If you like this video, please support our channel with a like, comment or subscription. The Kutub complex is a fine example of Indo-Islamic architecture. The building of the Kutub complex is listed in the UNESCO World Heritage Site in India. The most important buildings of Kutub complex are Kutub Minar the Corvat Ul Mosque and the Iron Pillar. Kutub Minar is the tallest tower made of stone and one of the most beautiful Islamic buildings ever in India. It was built in the 13th century. In 1199 work began on this tower, whose intention was to be the most magnificent victory tower in the world. It was the prototype of all towers in India and is not only recognized in Delhi as the landmark, but it is also one of the most beautiful monuments in India and in the world. Especially the unusual architecture attracts visitors. The tower consists of five floors, which can be clearly seen from the outside because of the balconies. On the lowest floor, the tower still has a diameter of almost 14 meters, while on the fifth floor it is barely 3 meters. The alternation of red and yellow sandstone also contributes to the uniqueness of the tower. The Akshardham Temple in Delhi is in the Guinness Book of Records. The Swananarayan Temple, also called the Akshardham Temple, was entered into the Guinness Book of Records as the world's largest Hindu temple complex. That the Akshardham Temple has been included in the most significant collection of records is a great honor for both the country and its people. The capital's religious monument is a true highlight and is already known worldwide. A visit to this contemporary architectural wonder is undoubtedly recommended if you have enough time with you. This temple complex was built by a Hindu association from Gujarat and their wealthy followers abroad, and was inaugurated on November 7, 2005 by then Indian President Abdul Kalam and Prime Minister Mainmohan Singh. The buildings are constructed of pink sandstone from Rajasthan, giving visitors a breathtaking sight. Highlights of the temple tour include a 10-minute boat ride that introduces visitors to India's 10,000-year-old cultural heritage. Humayun was the second Mughal emperor, 1508-1556. His tomb, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, became a landmark for the architectural concept of Mughal-era tombs, as it was the first time that the mausoleum and gardens were combined into a single complex. It also served as a model for the world-famous Taj Mahal in Agra. Humayun's widow had it built by Persian master builders in nine years after the death of her husband. She constantly supervised the work on the tomb and even set up camp on site. The very well-preserved mausoleum made of red sandstone and its brilliant white onion dome is the oldest Mughal tomb in Delhi and is one of the most magnificent historical buildings in the city. The facades have been elaborately decorated with marble inlays and four large arched portals lead into the plain interior, under which lies the actual burial chamber. The beautiful garden with its numerous small watercourses and fountains is home to vast numbers of playful chipmunks. The large area was later also used for the burial of other moguls.
The Gurdwara Bangla Sahib is one of the most famous Sikh places of worship in India and one of the tourist highlights of a trip to Delhi. It is centrally located in Delhi and impresses from afar with its extraordinary architecture. Gurdwara means gateway to the Guru, and that describes it quite well. For this is where Guru Granth Sahib, the holy book of the Sikhs is kept. Bangla Sahib is a place where they can pray, meditate and come to rest. But the temple is also a famous landmark in New Delhi, which all people are allowed to enter. Age, nationality, gender and faith do not matter. Everyone is welcome. Bangla means bungalow, which already gives an idea of what the building used to be. In the 17th century, Raja Jai Singh, the Maharaja of Amber, which is now part of Jaipur, lived here. At that time there was absolute emergency. Cholera and smallpox ravaged the country and killed many inhabitants. In 1664, the eighth of the ten Sikh gurus, Guru Ha Krishan Sahib, visited the Maharaja. Many Sikh people heard about it and asked the guru to help them. He made them bathe in the well next to the bungalow, which brought them healing. The tragic part of the story is that the guru himself contracted smallpox and died in 1664, before his eighth birthday. India Gate is a memorial in the form of a triumphal arch. It is dedicated to the 90,000 soldiers of the British Indian Army who died in the First World War, as well as thousands of other soldiers who lost their lives in the war in Afghanistan and Bangladesh. The 42-metre-high monument is located at the end of Rajput Boulevard in New Delhi. Designed by Edwin Lutyens and built in 1921, India Gate is one of the most visited sites in the capital of India. Many events take place on the spacious grounds of the boulevard. The adjacent spacious park is very well maintained and offers lawns where you can picnic and enjoy the atmosphere. It is best to visit India Gate after sunset, when it is illuminated, then it looks particularly impressive. Like a vision, the truly audacious design by Iranian architect Faraburz Subar rises between New Delhi and the Qutub Minar above immaculately green lawns interspersed with water basins. The House of Worship of the Baha'i Religion, a spectacular example of recent sacred architecture, was consecrated on Christmas Day 1986 after seven years of construction and has since been the destination of some three million visitors a year. The 35-metre-high dome in the form of an opening lotus blossom grows out of nine water basins arranged around the building, which are used for air conditioning, among other things. It consists of 27 leaves made of concrete shells only 13 centimetres thick. With nine petals, each arranged in three rows, the plant contains two of the most important magic numbers of Asian religions. Nine is considered the number of the moon, three is considered the number of the miracle. Like the Mughals, the architect used the wonderful contrast of white marble and red sandstone. The floor of the interior is covered with marble, the entrances and stairs are covered with sandstone slabs. The outer nine leaves are curved outward to form the nine entrances, an essential component of Baha'i architecture symbolizing openness to the followers of different religions. In the immediate vicinity of Khan Market, Lodi Garden covers an area of over 360,000 square meters. This is where the locals meet for their morning jog, a walk or a relaxed picnic. If you want to recover from an extensive shopping tour, this park is the right place for it. At the same time, you can immerse yourself in the exciting history of Delhi and visit the historical tombs of former rulers. It all started in the 15th century, when the son of Muhammad Shah, monarch of the Syed dynasty, had a tomb built for his late father. In the 16th century, the mausoleum of Sikandar Lodi, ruler of the Lodi dynasty, was added. It is also believed that great Mughal Emperor Akbar used the green area as an observatory. In addition to historic structures, Lodi Garden features the National Bonsai Park, a greenhouse, a lake and a rose garden. 
and of course, you'll find countless large palm trees, exotic birds, butterflies and expansive green spaces. The sprawling palace complex has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 2007. It is located on the eastern edge of the Chandni Chalk Market, the old town of Old Delhi. The complex was built during the height of the Mughal Empire by Emperor Shah Jahan between 1639 and 1648. The Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan is also known for the construction of the Taj Mahal, which he commissioned in memory of his wife. From north to south, the Red Fort is 1 km long and 500 m wide from west to east. At the time of the Mughal Empire, the Yamuna River still flowed past the eastern walls, but today this river can be found a few hundred meters away. The Red Fort got its name from its characteristic red ramparts. Due to the many lootings in Delhi by foreign conquerors, large parts of the furniture were destroyed and many art objects were stolen. Despite this, the Red Fort is one of the most visited sites in all of India. In the heart of Delhi's old city, a labyrinth of narrow streets is interwoven with small stores and market stalls. The Chandi Chalk Market, one of the oldest bazaars on the subcontinent, is a feast for all the senses. It smells of deliciously prepared curries and the most exotic spices, fresh fruits, tempting sweets, incense and flowers. The offer is almost limitless and as diverse as the visitors and operators of the bazaar itself. There is a lively hustle and bustle, people are trading and haggling everywhere, businesses are loudly celebrating, and a mix of all eras of Indian music history, from classical Carnatic sounds to modern pop, is blaring from the loudspeakers. The lively and colorful market offers an authentic insight into Indian life. Some even say that anyone who has not visited the Chandni Chalk has never experienced the real India. The enormous Friday Mosque, which rises on a rock one kilometre west of the Red Fort far above the sea of houses of Old Delhi, is owed to Shah Jahan, who was as art-loving as he was pompous. Not only does it form an architectural ensemble together with the Red Fort, it was also consciously integrated into the political structure. Every Friday, the Mughal and his court marched in pompous procession from the palace to the mosque, thus conspicuously demonstrating his claim to power. Construction of what is still the largest mosque in India began in 1650. The date of completion is recorded as 1658, the year in which Shah Jahan was overthrown by his son Aurangzeb. Wide flights of steps lead up to the courtyard's entrance gates from three sides. The north entrance is for tourists, while the faithful enter the sanctuary through the east entrance on Fridays and on the high Islamic festival days. The complex owes its harmonious overall impression to the well-balanced combination of domes, gates, galleries and corner towers, which were skillfully placed in relation to each other by the architects. With a side length of more than 90 meters, the inner courtyard can accommodate more than 20,000 worshippers, 